all alone. I guess I'm not. You know, I usually don't mind being alone. Like when I've had a really busy day and want some downtime to myself to read a book or to work on a hobby. And then there are times when I don't like being alone. When I've taken a wrong turn when I was driving somewhere maybe and realized that I'm lost. Oh, I don't like being alone then. Those kind of times that it is no fun being alone. Well, welcome back to School of the Rock. I'm Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here this morning. You know, one time when I was a kid, I went to a store with my dad, and somehow we got separated. Maybe that's happened to you before. I started to get scared and feel alone. Then, I thought I saw my dad, and I ran over to him and hugged him, only to realize I wasn't hugging my dad but a stranger who had a coat like my dad. Then, not only did I feel scared and alone, I also felt really embarrassed. Fortunately, soon after that, my dad found me, and I no longer felt alone, but very relieved. Now, last week, we started our new series of lessons about learning to keep chill, about keeping our cool. And the series title is chill. <laughs> but it can be hard when things heat up to keep our cool. But God calls us to show his love, to be slow to anger and be kind to others even when things do heat up. With his help, we can stay as cool as an arctic wind, no matter what we face. Sometimes feeling alone can be scary and cause us to lose our cool, and it's those times that it's especially important to remember that God is always with us. Now, in our Bible story today, we're going to hear about a man who felt alone and scared, but God showed him that he wasn't alone. Now, before we dig into our story today, let's say our big idea together. Whenever I feel alone, I can remember that God is with me. Our Bible story is found in 1 Kings 19, 1 to 18. And the Bible is the word of God, and everything in the Bible is true. And God uses the Bible to speak to us. So let's listen to what he has to say to us today in our story. Now, before I jump into today's passage, I want to give you a little background about the story. The story is about Elijah, who is a prophet of God. Now, Elijah spoke the words of God to his people. And sometimes this got Elijah into trouble. King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, who were the king and queen of Israel, didn't like to hear the words of God. They didn't believe in the one true God. They worshipped a false god named Baal. And this was wrong. Elijah confronted Ahab and Jezebel about their wrongdoing. And needless to say, the king and queen did not like Elijah very much. One time... Elijah challenged all the false prophets of the false god of Baal to a contest. There would be two altars, one to God and one to Baal, and each side would pray asking for fire to come down from heaven and, and burn everything that was on the altar. Now, the false prophets called out to Baal day and night, but nothing happened. Of course nothing happened. Baal was not a real god. Then Elijah covered his altar in water. He soaked the altar in water, and he called out to God. Immediately, God sent down fire from heaven, and Elijah proved that God was real. After this, Elijah had all the false prophets of Baal put to death. Well, this made Jezebel very angry. Let's check out our Bible story to see what happened next. King Ahab told his wife, Queen Jezebel, everything Elijah had done. He told her how Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah. She said, you can be sure that I will kill you just as I killed the other prophets of God. I'll do this by this time tomorrow. If I don't, may the gods punish me greatly. Elijah was afraid. So he ran for his life. He came to Beersheba in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he traveled for one day into the desert. He came to a small bush, and he sat down under it. He prayed to God that he would die, 
Lord, I've had enough, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my people of long ago. Then he lay down under the bush and he fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him. The angel said, get up and eat. Elijah looked around. Near his head, he saw some bread. It had been baked over hot coals. A jar of water was also there. So Elijah ate and drank. Then he lay down again. The angel of the Lord came to him a second time. He touched him and said, get up and eat. Your journey will be long and hard. So he got up. He ate and drank. The food gave him new strength. He traveled for 40 days and 40 nights. He kept going until he arrived at Horeb. It was the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night. A message came to Elijah from the Lord. He said, Elijah, what are you doing here? He replied, Lord God who rules over all, I've been very committed to you. The Israelites have turned their backs on your covenant. They have torn down your altars. They've put your prophets to death with their swords, and I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. The Lord said, Go out, stand on the mountain in front of me. I'm going to pass by. As the Lord approached, a very powerful wind tore the mountains apart. It broke up the rocks, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire came, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, there was only a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his coat over his face and he went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. Then a voice said to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? He replied, Lord God who rules over all, I've been very committed to you. The Israelites have turned their backs on your covenant. They have torn down your altars. They put your prophets to death with their swords, and I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel as king over Arab. Also, anoint Jehu as king over Israel. He is the son of Nimshi, and anoint Elisha from Abel, Mehola, as the next prophet after you. He is the son of Shaphat. Jehu will put to death anyone who escapes Hazel's sword, and Elisha will put to death anyone who escapes Jehu's sword. But I will keep 7,000 people in Israel for myself. They have not bowed down to Baal, and they have not kissed him. At the beginning of our story, we see how tired and hungry Elijah was. He was also scared, and he wasn't even taking care of his own basic needs. But Elijah wasn't alone. God was with him. And God gave Elijah the time he needed to rest. And when it was time to eat, God sent an angel to give Elijah food to eat. When Elijah had his strength back, he went to Mount Horeb. Here is where God really showed Elijah that he is always with us. Mount Horeb was also known as the mountain of God. He asked Elijah why he had come. Elijah told God all about how alone and scared he felt. That's when some amazing things happened. There was a great and mighty wind. It was so strong that it tore the mountain apart. Then there was an earthquake that shook the ground and a great fire came next. These certainly got Elijah's attention. But Elijah didn't find God in the wind, the earthquake, or the fire. Finally, there was a gentle whisper, a still, small voice. And immediately, Elijah realized that God was there with him. Elijah threw his cloak over his face to show respect and worship for God. Most importantly, Elijah knew that he was not alone, and he could keep his cool knowing that God is always with him. Now, all of us have times when we feel alone and scared. We may feel like no one understands us or that no one wants to listen to us and we end up feeling totally alone. But we can learn from Elijah that we are never alone. God is always with us. We won't likely see winds that tear apart mountains, earthquakes, or huge fires to reassure us that he's with us. But we can listen for his gentle voice. Now, it probably won't be a voice that we hear with our ears, but rather a voice that we hear with our hearts. 
God can put peace in our hearts and reassuring thoughts in our minds. God wants you to remember and for me to remember, I can keep my cool because God is always with me. Well, thanks for joining me today at School to Rock. I hope you'll come back next week for another episode of Chill. We'll continue to learn how to keep our cool when things heat up. And remember, God loves you, and I do too. Bye-bye.